Something I've noticed since making the Rebirth to Skid Row documentary, a video where I praised Eric for giving us what is, in my opinion, the unprecedented return of Skid Row, is the seemingly undying rivalry between the fans who are pro-back and the fans who are pro-Eric. It's literally an everyday, ongoing battle in my comments section that both excites and perplexes me. People just love to fight over this, blindingly pledging their allegiance to either side, with few people refusing to see the actual benefits of the middle ground. The rivalry is strong, but who really is the superior frontman? Is it Sebastian Bach with his years of experience, talent and ego? Or is it the cool, calm and collected Eric with his irresistible swagger, positive energy, martial arts discipline and high performing vocals? Well, in this video I aim to get to the bottom of who really is the better frontman. But before we get into it, if you guys could like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment, it will help this video out a great deal. And with that said, let's get on with it. So what makes a great frontman? A great frontman for me is someone who serves as a positive role model. Someone you can believe in. Someone who, on a stage, looks and performs like a larger than life character. Someone who has the ability to make you believe in their message, whatever that may be. And of course, has the pipes to really hit the notes of whatever song they are performing. So what makes Eric so great? Unlike Sebastian's successors, Eric is the first frontman to join Skid Row and truly stand out as more than just a singer for hire. His live performances are absolutely unreal, as are his contributions to Skid Row's latest release, The Gang's All Here. In just a few short years, he's become far more of a presence than any of the previous successors to Bach combined. He thrives where previous singers fell flat in every respect. When he's not working with Skid Row, he gives us variety with the work he's done with his previous band Heat and the amazing covers that he does on his YouTube channel. Because of him, the band is finally climbing back up the ladder of success, playing bigger venues and major events. His discipline, the struggles that he's faced and overcome, his attitude and overall approach to the work in my eyes makes him a true and worthy successor to the brand that is Skid Row. But what makes Sebastian Bach so great? Well, there's no denying the man's legacy. He's got heart, passion and soul. Every fibre of his being lives and breathes rock and roll. He gave the best years of his life to Skid Row, delivering Skid Row a number one album on the Billboard Top 200 and a lasting legacy that stood the test of time. He's given us quality solo albums and endless amounts of entertainment on all of the various sitcoms, reality TV shows and films that he's been a part of. Not to mention his autobiography and his work he's done with Broadway. He's got the age, experience and a vocal presence that never fails to capture the public's heart and imagination. He's loud, he's boisterous, he's sometimes a lightning rod for controversy. And I think all of this combined is why we love him so much. He's a character. But is he really a superior frontman to Eric? And does he really belong with present day Skid Row? As far as who the better frontman is, it's really hard to say. Both of these singers have their strengths and their weaknesses. So I think putting both singers to the test is the only way to get to the bottom of this. We're going to take a look at some live performances of both singers and compare them to see who sings the songs better. To be able to sing most of Skid Row's catalogue, you've got to be able to reach some insane vocal highs. And that's what we're going to be focusing in on. I think the high points of The Tret, In a Darkened Room and Monkey Business will be a fair assessment. To get these songs right doesn't just take range, it also takes control as vibrato is also a key component to these songs. So first up, it's the tret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
far as the track goes, Sebastian is clearly struggling to reach where he needs to be. He hits a ton of bum notes and just about reaches the high point. However, his vibrato, whenever he gets a chance to fit it in, is perfect. For Eric though, this song doesn't seem to be a challenge at all, as he clearly and comfortably hits all of the correct notes with ease. Another song with challenge and vocal lines is In a Darkened Room. Let's take a look and see how both singers fare. Again, it seems like it's a struggle for Sebastian to reach these notes. Again, good vibrato, but a lot of bum notes sang and sometimes he's not even singing them at all. These songs were tailor made for Sebastian's vocals, so it's strange that it turned out this way. But once again, Eric is able to pull off the songs note for note, just like on the album. Finally, let's take a look at Monkey Business. Doesn't look great for Bach, does it? In my opinion, Bach has maintained his beautiful falsetto vocal, but as far as his range goes, it's just not what it used to be. And maybe this is a symptom of old age, but he still puts his heart and soul into the songs, which is undeniable. But you just can't argue with Eric's performances. He absolutely blows back out of the water. 
In terms of range, with Eric, the songs are sang with the ferocity and passion they truly deserve. And if you close your eyes, his renditions sound like prime back. So as far as vocal ability, I have to give this win to Eric. Sebastian's style these days is questionable at best. In the kicking and screaming era, he nailed it. His hair, his outfits, all blended together perfectly. He looked great, same in the Give Him Hell era. But these days, whatever falls out of the wardrobe seems to end up being a stage wear, and none of it goes together. Overgrown t-shirts paired with suit jackets and sparkly red pants with an unkept mane of hair. I don't get it. As far as physicality goes, Sebastian clearly isn't what he once was, and honestly, this is sad to see. Sebastian has always worked hard to maintain a slender figure, but in the last few years seems to have let things slide a bit. It's certainly not a crime, but we've seen the same thing happen to Vince Neil, and well, we all know how that ended up. I don't want to see that happen to Back, but unfortunately, that's where he seems to be headed. Eric, on the other hand, is lean, fit and healthy, and works hard to maintain himself. And when you do that, it clearly shows in everything you do on that stage. Eric's dress sense all oozes cool, as does his hair. That overgrown mohawk really suits him. He looks like someone you can believe in, and that's important. So in terms of style and physicality, I again have to give this one to Eric. But what about new music? Both Back and Skid Row have released new music videos as of late. Skid Row with their song Resurrected and Back with What Do I Gotta Lose. Both songs are quality, and both singers do a great job on these tracks. Both videos are enjoyable, but for me, the winner of these two songs is What Do I Gotta Lose. It feels like an underdog about the claws way back to the top. I love it. So as far as new material, I gotta give this one to Back. But let's just say for pretend sake that Sebastian rejoins Skid Row tomorrow. After everything I've showed you, do you really think hand on your heart that he would be up to the standard he needs to be at? Even if he was, we more than likely wouldn't continue to get quality solo records from Back. The truth is, the dynamic between Back and the original members just isn't there. They don't like each other, and they never will. Back is better off on his own. He's an amazing solo artist, he doesn't need them. But Eric fits in there perfectly. Eric and Skid Row, they're a cohesive unit that are finally doing well again. At the end of the day, we can all sit here comparing these two to a blue in the face. It'll never end. There will always be a back camp and there will always be a Skid Row camp, and that's fine. But for me, I love both of these guys exactly where they are. They both have a lot to offer. The solution in my eyes, like I mentioned in the Rebirth documentary, is simple. Bury the hatchet and co-headline together. If Halloween can do it, why can't these guys? I hope sometime in the future they can find a way to work out their complicated differences. But for now, let's just try and enjoy the era for what it is. Sebastian is about to drop a new record any day now, and Skid Row will more than likely end up doing the same. I can't wait. So yeah, that's the video. This has been Sebastian Back vs Eric Romwell by Richie Kearns Productions. Thank you very much for watching.